Hey students, this next video is going to be focused on the photocomposite exercise 2A for this particular module in um, graphic imaging, CIS 134. I wanted to run through it quickly just to kind of aid you and um, give you a little tutorial on how it's done. Um, I told you to download the exercise 2A images. There are two. One is of a campus of sorts and one is um, of a horse. So I thought that you would download both of them and then launch Photoshop. And then um, we're gonna go ahead and open the exercise 2A image, which is the picture of the campus. So do a file open from your top menu in Photoshop once you've launched. And then you're going to, um, obviously if you're on a PC, navigate out to where that is located. And I'm gonna go ahead and just download it. Okay, so find it out on the desktop is where I saved it. So let's get there. There's the photo. I did get this photo from a great stock photography site called pexels.com. It is in your resources. So um, finding imagery is not that difficult for either one of these exercises for this module. You can go and find high resolution imagery from other creative professionals as long as um, they might ask you to mention them and give them a credit. Um, so a credit is always good to have um, if, if you do develop something. Okay, so I open this and the next thing you want to do is um, while in the campus image place um, we're going to place something, but we're in the crop mode. It defaulted to that. So let's go, go ahead and hit the move tool. Just kind of get out of there. And remember what I told you about when there's an image locked, um, you know, you can click on that lock to unlock it. And then if you want, hide it. I always like to make another copy. So I do a control J and then I hide that one in the back. Um, it's commonly the way that I work because it's um, it allows me to safeguard if I destruct this layer. Then I always have one that I can go back to without too much of a problem. Of course, you can always reopen the original native file, but um, this way at least it's a little bit quicker. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to place a linked file into this. And the linked file we're going to place is the horse file. I'm going to do a file. Place linked place linked and we're going to navigate out to this beautiful white horse. I'm going to go ahead and place it and it kind of makes its own layer down here just to be aware of that. I'm going to go ahead and just um, since it's already giving me this bounding box around I'm going to hover over the lower right hand side and it gives me that nice little double arrow. I'm going to hold down shift because I want to scale this proportionately and I'm going to go ahead and scale. I'm going to scale it way down. Now, some of you may not have to hold on shift because it's auto uh, proportionately scaled. So that's a good thing. Um, and then go ahead and place it somewhere where you might like it. This is not going to be extreme. I'm not going to be picky as in you know, what you do with this, because this is purely practicing the skills and the functions. So once we place um, this image, we're gonna go ahead, and it's not confirmed yet. So we have it here on this layer, but in order to confirm its placement, you'll double click it, and then it kind of confirms it, and that bounty box goes away. Now, I want to make this appear as if the horse is standing in this path. Um, what it says is, it wants you to do that. What you might notice down here is this link. It's telling me in Adobe, in Photoshop that this is a linked file. And if you hover, it says smart object thumbnail. There's not a lot we can do with a smart object. It is scalable and it will maintain its resolution, but I do want to work with it in pixel form um, for this. So I'm going to go ahead and rasterize it. And I talked a little bit about that um, before. So if I'm going to go into image, or layer, I'm sorry, layer, rasterize, smart object. Or you can go to layer, smart object. I think there's a rasterize, yep. <laughs> there's a rasterize, so it's a little weird that all that's in here, but there's many different ways to do the same thing in Photoshop. It's a really powerful engine like that. So I'm gonna do layer, rasterize, smart object, and then you can see that that little icon went away. Okay, so now I have the horse. 
And what, I, what the next step tells you to do is using your selection tool of choice, isolate the horse, um, isolate the horse, and I can do that with many different selection tools. I can do it with the magic wand tool and just select certain areas. And as long as I play around with my tolerance, you know, it'll select more or less pixels depending. Um, I don't think I'm gonna do it that way. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna wanna zoom in and D to deselect. I'm gonna zoom in using the uh, control plus and minus. Control D is deselect. Um, I'm going to kind of do it this way. I'm going to get kind of close to it so I can see the horse. And I'm going to find the magnetic lasso tool. This is one of my favorite little selection tools because it will stick to um, the object that you're trying to isolate. So I'm going to start by, as long as I'm on this layer, and I'm on, I'm on the magnetic lasso. Again, you can use a different tool if you like, because I want you to experiment. That's what this exercise is for. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna kind of slowly go around the horse so it kind of captures the horse. You can see it's sort of magnetized to the image. Now I'm gonna get a little quicker because I only have so much video time, but I want I, it's not gonna be perfect on my end. I want you guys to pay a little more attention than what I am. But anyway, you can see what the gist of this is. I go all the way around and it calls out the horse. You can see how powerful this might be. Of course, this tail is gonna be one of those challenging ones. If you wanna get the tail, you might wanna go back into the tail later and make it perfect. But for right now, for me, I'm gonna go kind of fast here. But even if, if I go fast, you can tell it's pretty accurate. Okay, and then you want to close it. Closing it allows it to um, connect, and then you have your active layer. Now, there's some areas here that I'm going to want to eliminate later, like they've got little holes, holes between the legs. Of course, you want that to be background, but I'll tell you how to do that later. So now I've got the horse isolated. What I want to do is then go up to Select. inverse and what that does if i zoom out by doing a control minus is it selects everything opposite of the horse and that would be mostly transparent area so we're just going to do that and hit delete and then it gets rid of the background now i'm going to hit a control d or command d on the mac okay and then zoom back in so now we have this horse that is starting to become a little more believable you can go back in and you can grab a different selection tool if you want this magic wand, which I love. It's, I'll always love the magic wand tool. But I'm going to want to, you know, like adjust the tolerance to 10. Click. And that's still a little bit much because it's grabbing way too much of that area. Remember to deselect is um, Control or Command D. Control on the PC, Command on the Mac. Okay, so that looks about good. Delete that area. There's some areas here that don't look right. So you can get really specific. I don't really need you to be that specific for this assignment, but I want it to be somewhat believable. Okay, so I've got a humongous horse that's not very believable. Horses, well, horses might be that big. Maybe not that big. <laughs> so the next thing I wanted you to do after you are able to select that um, is... Um, choose to adjust the uh, uh, color balance or the adjustments in the blend modes. Um, so you can go ahead and get your adjustment layer out, which is window adjustments. The adjustments allow us to kind of play around, make sure you're still on that layer. And then you can look at your color balance. I'm hovering over here. Color balance allows you to play around and kind of blend these together. A little bit more. Um, let's see. Let me go back. That gave me a masking layer, which is always good to have, but I'm going to delete it. I really want to work mostly with um, adjusting the layer itself. So I'm going to go up to Image Adjust Levels. And my levels came up here. You can play around with the levels of the horse. The adjustments add an immediate layer to, 
to your image. So if you want to do image adjustments outside of a masking layer, then you can do color balance that way. Image adjustments, color balance. And now I'm going to try and get it to look like it fits in just a little bit more here. You can adjust the highlights that way, all sorts of stuff. Say okay. Now it looks a little more like it's part of the image. And then you can also add a little blend mode here. Um, I'm looking here, overlay maybe. No, that's a little bit too. So find which one works best for you. You can even keep it like that and just so it shows me what you've actually done with, um, with your adjustments. Normal, dissolve, darken, linear, color burn. So there's a lot of interesting little modes that you can choose and play with. Okay, so believable is great, but if I know that you've done the adjustment, that's even better. Okay, so that's really all I want you to do for this little exercise is place an image, um, work with your selection, and then kind of adjust the, you can even go into effects and do some interesting things that way, gradient overlays, pattern, outer glows, drop shadows, that kind of stuff, your blend options. Okay, so um, all of this stuff is at your fingertips. We're going to get more heavy into it later, but right now this is a great way to um, introduce you to selections, layers, and um, working with adjustments just a little bit. Okay, the next thing you want to do, if you're satisfied, you want to go ahead and save this as your layered file. Um, now, if it doesn't upload to a JetNet, you're going to want to check the image, image size. This is 300 resolution, and it's that way for a reason because we got it from a stock photography place. You're going to want to then go ahead and change that resolution to 72 and then say OK. It's going to get it really small, but that's OK. You're going to be able to upload it. Still keep it as a layered file, and then go File, Save As, and you're going to save this as your last name, so mine would be Hughes, underscore, and then you would save it as E2A, okay? And let that default, and it's going to default as a Photoshop document, which is a PSD. You don't want it on PDF, you want it to be Photoshop, so PSD. And then go ahead and save. Okay. And then you're going to want to compress that file. So right click on the file and then do a send to archive to zip um, or however your, your computer works it. People on the Mac will just click on the file and do file compress before you upload because that always helps compress the file. Okay. So this is for exercise 2A module, the second module of the term. Um, if you have questions, let me know. I'll see you in the next video.